and had a really had a had a great time. Uh, the spirit was there at, at our district assembly, and really uh, our, our our very own Salem Grace worship team uh, led uh, the district assembly. Did a great job. I was so proud of uh, our people for stepping in. But I tell you what, we it is good to be back. I feel like I've been gone. <laughs> I feel like we had big stuff, and then we uh, wasn't last Sunday fun. We baptized a bunch of people. I love I love when that happens. Uh, we're going to do that again here in the next couple of weeks. So we, we've got more to come. So I love I love baptism Sundays, but. But uh, this morning, I am just so grateful for an opportunity. Uh, I, I, was, I was praying that wasn't my phone ringing uh, right there. But uh, somebody calling one in. But uh, we, are, uh, we had uh, the privilege uh, this week of having uh, at District Assembly uh, one of our general superintendents. Now, if you're, if you're new to the Church of Nazarene or uh, you're not familiar with the Church of the Nazarene, we have a district superintendent, which is Dr. Kramer. Many of you know Dr. Kramer. Uh, and and uh, he, he, he helps us, uh, helps manage that district in Illinois from about Springfield down. Uh, and then we have uh, seven general superintendents in our church uh, as a denomination as a whole. And so we are very, very fortunate. We were very, very fortunate uh, this week uh, to hear uh, from Dr. Gustavo Crocker who is our general superintendent uh, for our area at District Assembly, and uh, he followed us home. So uh, <laughs> he followed me home. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, Dr. Uh, Gustavo Crocker is here with us this morning, and I'm going to invite Dr. Crocker to come. We are so very honored to have him with us this morning. Dr. Uh, uh, he has a little bit, uh, he went to school at uh, Carbondale. Uh, uh, down in Southern Illinois, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure his accent is exactly Southern Illinois accident. <laughs> but this is Dr. Gustavo uh, Crocker. We're so grateful to have him speak with us this morning and so grateful that uh, you came, Dr. Kramer. Welcome to Salem Grace. Let's give him a good Salem Grace welcome. Can you hear me now? No. It's everywhere we go. No, nope. not really. Not really. We'll try again. There you go. It was in my eye. <laughs> well, good morning. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing the the pulpit with me or the table. <laughs> and um, well, yes, it, it is true. My wife and I, my wife Rachel, is is there. And she travels with me, and it is true. Uh, I went to school in Carbondale at SIU. 27 years ago, I, I came to, um, as a full grade scholar, to first of all to learn English at SIU and, and then, uh, then to do my master's. I'm an architect by trade, and, uh, and the Lord has a sense of humor, really. <laughs> and so if you do not understand what I'm saying, blame it on SIU school, uh, <laughs> ESL program. I, they told me that I passed, but uh, half the time I preach, people are saying, what is he talking about? <laughs> well, one of the things that I love about, about being a Christian is that uh, in Christ, we receive the best gift that anyone could really aspire to. And that is a permanent, eternal presence with God. That's really what it is. I shared yesterday at the district assembly that, that the best thing that there is, is is the eternal, permanent, ongoing, forever, now and forever relationship with God. Really, that's really the whole business. You are here because of that. You're here because all of us have this thirst for a relationship. And there's nothing, 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 nothing compares to the presence of God. The presence of God. That's the best thing there is. And yeah, we, we have things that we treasure and appreciate, but the, really the biggest, the biggest blessing is a relationship with a creator. Imagine that. It's a relationship with a creator that starts today, in Christ, starts today, and goes on and on and on, and, and then we transfer from, from our temporary suits, and then it goes to eternity, and then it goes on and on and on forever. That's really the greatest blessing, is His presence. In fact, when we sing, the, the reason we, 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 we sing here is not to, to give the guys the opportunity to, to share their talents while you are talented, but that's not really why we come here. 
we come here kind of to rehearse, to be in his presence. In fact, if I, if I would have had a camera, when we were singing, How Great Is Our God, some of you were already kind of kumbaya. <laughs> because that's, that's really what it is. When we are in the presence of God, we feel good. Not only good, we feel fulfilled. We feel that nothing else matters. The most important blessing for all humanity is a perfect, ongoing, present, and eternal relationship with God. That's what it is. Now, the reality is that we, we, we need some metaphors to understand this whole thing about the presence of God. There are various metaphors. Perhaps the, the best known metaphor is that of a banquet. See, what I have found in every culture, I am from Guatemala, we love to eat. But I thought that we were the only ones who loved to eat. And then I have, I, have, I have come, I visited, and I have had the privilege of ministering in over 120 countries of the world. And there's, there, there's several things in common. One of them is that we love to eat. We reduce everything to a meal. Have you realized that? A baby's born, oh, let's have a meal. The, the team won, the Salukis, no, they never win. So, <laughs> bless their hearts. Okay, the Cardinals win. So we have a meal. Somebody graduates from something because now we invented uh, kindergarten graduation and elementary school graduation and high, junior high, high school uh, graduated from VBS, we, whatever graduation we have, we, we throw a meal. We love meals. In fact, in, fact in, in, in our generation, we're so busy that the thing that whenever we want to connect with someone, this is what we say, let's have a meal. Let's have a meal. My wife and I, we have two, two grown daughters. They live on their own. They are millennials. They are the epitome of the millennials. And, uh, and so they have taught us a lot of theology, really. And so the way we get together is, is around a meal. We, they text, we text, and whatever they do. And, and then, but the conclusion is, let's have a meal. And they have their favorite place to, to gather. We really love to eat, don't we? And, and that's where we, we really... When we want to symbolize a relationship, we say, let's come to the table. In fact, whenever somebody has landed on your book, whenever they have made it to your book, and you, you know what I mean, then you say, oh, let's come to my house, or we're going to go to your house, and we're going to have a meal. That's not only here. It's all over the world. That's why the, 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 the idea of the presence of God has been symbolized with, with a table. Because we all, everywhere in the world, we can, we can connect with that. In fact, Jesus, when he left, the last thing he did was that he called him to the table. You remember the, the, the painting of the Last Supper? You remember the Last Supper? John 13. I wonder why is it that the painting that... that uh, Leonardo da Vinci made of the, of, the, of the Last Supper there in line here, just 12 and 1. It's a weird kind of a table, isn't it? Well, they all lined up for the picture. That's why. <laughs> so Jesus, on that day, he, he sat at the table, and at the table he said to them, this is my body that is broken for you. This is, this is my blood that is shed for you. And you know what? Do this in remembrance of me. And that day he, he set the table. From that day, he set the table and he said, this table is extended from now all the way to eternity. So every so often we come to the table. Here's another illustration. He said, uh, one day we'll all be invited to the banquet of the wedding of the Lamb. Because this whole idea of eternity is kind of a strange idea. Some of us some of when he say, well, and there are going to be streets of gold and, and crystal seas. Some of us say, well, I don't, I, I don't do gold. I see, I get seasick. But all of us eat. 
And all of us love parties. Even the most introverted person loves to go to be invited to a, to a, to a, a banquet. And so he has the second illustration. The, the eternity is going to be like, a, like an ongoing banquet where we are all going to be sitting at the wedding of the Lamb. Oh, that sounds cool. Then he gives another illustration. See, I learned this illustration in the Middle East. I was there with my, my, my friend from Jordan. He took me to Lebanon. And forgive me, I know you have good food. I mean, all this Bob Evans stuff. But, <laughs> but this friend from Lebanon, he, he introduced me to the best food in the world. It's the Lebanese food. You've got to try it. It does your body, your, your heart good. So here we are, and, and we are in Lebanon, and, and they bring the, the, the hummus and the Leb, Lebanon and all this kind of stuff that you should try. And then, and then after that, I thought I was full, and then they bring the grill, the kebab stuff, the chicken, and, the, and I'm like, wow. And then we ate, and after an hour and a half, then he says, okay, now here comes the fruit. And I'm saying, I don't have any room for that. Oh, you, you have to save because there is the sweets afterwards and the tea. Well, three hours later, and I was kind of dead, <laughs> he says to me, let me explain something to you, he said. When in the book of Revelation, he said, when chapter 3, the Lord says, here I knock on the door and call. If, if anyone opens the door, I will walk in, I will enter in, and I will dine with them and them with me. Now, in the West, he said, we love privacy. We, we lock our doors. We have a fence, and, and we have these signs that say, no soliciting, no trespassing. So, in the West, to let someone in is a big deal. You know, you knock on the door and not, not, not a lot of people open the door. You, you know what I mean. We have this, uh, this peephole or we have some way to, to pretend that we're not there, especially if those guys with a, with a briefcase and, and, and an umbrella knock on the door. You know what, what I'm talking about. See, those guys from an umbrella and, 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 and the briefcase, they went to a neighborhood in, in an area and they were knocking and knocking on every door in an apartment complex and nobody opened the door. That's who we are. This husband was a nice husband. And he said, look at these guys, bless their hearts. I think I'm going to open the door for them. And it was a Saturday. The wife said, why are you going to open the door? They're just going to come and talk to us about religion. And uh, don't do that. Oh, but bless their hearts, poor guys. I've seen them since 7 o'clock. They have been knocking on doors here in the whole complex. Nobody has opened the door. It's 11 o'clock. The wife said, okay. Finally, he knocked on the door, 11.30. He opens the door, and then he lets them in. And they walk in, and as they're sitting there, he, he asks them, so what do you want to share with us? And the guy said, we don't know. We have never been this far. <laughs> we were trained to knock on the door. <laughs> yeah, we love privacy in this society. And so we put a lot of emphasis on when, when we evangelize and all of that. Let Jesus in your heart. Open the door. But really what Jesus said was, if someone opens the door, I will enter in and I will dine with them and then with me. The important thing is not open the door. The important thing is that he will dine with us and us with him. We have meals with our best friends. We don't invite strangers to have a three-hour banquet in our house. So the best gift, the best gift, the best blessing that any individual could have, the best, the promise of the blessing is to have this permanent, present, and eternal, ongoing relationship with the Creator, with God Himself. That's the best deal, is to have an ongoing meal where you will not gain weight, you will not get sick, your, your, your carb count it doesn't matter, and you could order whatever you want because His presence is whatever you want. Now you get excited about it? I get excited about it. Just to think that I didn't have to do anything, nothing, 
I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to pay. I didn't, it, it was not because of my smarts, my, my looks, my, my great southern, really southern accent. It was not, nothing. It was not because of that that Jesus went to the cross and he said, Welcome. Amen. That was it. He said, Welcome. It's finished. And now you and I have access to the banquet. That's really awesome. Now, let me tell you the story of someone who got really excited about it. Now, if I were telling this story in Brazil, you know, you you, you, you like soccer, don't you? You're all right. Okay. (laughs) I know I'm I'm in in cardinal territory. Okay, Cubs. (laughs) But Christ is royalty. So royals... (laughs) No. <laughs> See, if I would have said this in Brazil, the Brazilians would have been like if somebody had scored a, a goal in soccer. Yeah! Here, I know. I, 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 I went to school here in Carbondale. So I know how people in southern Illinois get excited. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so we're all invited In Christ, we're all invited to a permanent, ongoing, eternal banquet with the land. Cool. So let me go to the scripture. I'm going to tell you a story from the scripture. It's it's in in the gospel written by Luke, by Dr. Luke. It's in the 14th chapter, chapter 14, verse 16. Here, Here it starts. Well, I'm going to start with verse 15. Because this is almost like the introduction. Listen to this. When one of these at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, just like you, I I was just preparing you. This was not the sermon. I was just preparing you. (laughs) Getting you excited. Getting you to say, woohoo. Okay. So when one of those at the table with him heard him, he said to Jesus, woohoo. Well, actually, he said, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. He got it. He said, oh, I get it now. Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God. Blessed is the one who is going to be invited to that party. Blessed is the one who is going to be at the table. Blessed is the one. And and, and so he got really excited. Basically, he was saying, oh, man, I'm in. Hey, my ticket. Verse 16, Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet. And invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please Excuse me. Still another said, I just got married so I can come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Serve, the servant said. What you order has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told the servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Since we all preachers have to give our sermon a title, I was was trying to get a a nice title. One of those theologically deep, you know, general superintendents are supposed to be smart, theologically deep. So here is the title of the sermon. Excuses are like belly buttons. (laughs) Everybody has one. No, that doesn't cut it. So I'm going to give you another title. That's, that's more profound. It's more profound. That, that this, this title really is, is to honor my, my months at SAU. The title of the sermon is Blessing the Blessings that Keep Us from the Blessing. Yeah, that's a mess, isn't it? Okay, let, let, me, let me start again. I have come here this morning to bless the blessings that can keep us away from the blessing. 
I spent quite a bit of time introducing to you the idea of the blessing, the, the supreme blessing. The supreme blessing is His permanent, ongoing, present, and eternal presence on a perfect relationship with our Maker. That's the blessing. Nothing compares to it. That's what we sing all the time. But there are things that have the incredible potential of keeping us from that blessing. The, the irony is that those, many of those things, it's not only sin, you know, some of us were, were, were I was a mess. I was a mess and I was really, I was really away. I really fell short from the glory of God and praise the Lord for grace. Yeah, I'm not talking about those things. Those things keep us completely away. They cripple us. They make us blind. I'm talking about things that we hear in the bunch here, people of, of grace. Things that can keep us from the supreme blessing. And they are blessings. The first blessing that has this potential to keeping us from enjoying the supreme blessing is, is possessions. Now, don't get me wrong, God is a provider. Amen? One of his names, one of his many names in Scripture is Jehovah Jireh, which means God, the provider. He provides. See, he gives us anything we need. So if you have, if you have clothes to wear today, praise God. If you have food to eat today, praise God. If you have a place that you could call home, whether it's an apartment that you rent or a house that you own or, or a mansion, praise God, is a possession that God has given you. If you have four wheels that, you, that brought you here today, praise God. Possessions are a blessing. They are a blessing. I believe that. The fact of the matter is that God does not call it private ownership. He owns everything. He calls them possessions. When he gave him promised land, he said, go and possess the land. He gives us possessions. He is, he, he is so generous, he is so awesome that he gives us stuff. The problem is not that he gives us stuff. The problem is when the possessions possess us. Listen to the first excuse. The first guy said, I, I have just bought a field. I just I just acquired a new possession. I bought a field, and I have to go and check it out. I have to guard it. And see, the reality is that the more stuff we have, the more stuff we possess, the less sensitive we are to the presence of God. I experienced that when my wife and I got married. We didn't have a car. And I was about to finish architecture school, and I was, uh, we were quite broke. Then I became Mr. Architect, and I got my car, but, you know, it was my first car, and I, I had never had a car in my entire life, and, and so now I'm an architect, and we have our apartment, and, and we have our daughter, and we have a car. Now, it was not a car to be proud of. Well, I was very proud of it. It was a, Su a Suzuki, the, it was a pre-samurai, those little <laughs> matchboxes, you know? It was awesome, three-cylinder kind of a deal. And uh, I was so proud of it. My students, I was a college prof, and my students, they made fun of me because they knew that I was coming five miles away. And the thing made this noise. I was going like 20 miles an hour, but I was making all the noise. I was so proud of my car. The previous months before we bought a car, I slept like a baby. But then we bought a car. This, the, the neighborhood where we had our apartment had the reputation that cars got stolen. So I started losing my sleep over a car. Every noise I heard, I just went to the window. Oh, it, there it is. And you know, it's amazing that that little possession started possessing me. Well, that didn't stop there. 
This past year, we decided to, to downsize our house. It was just the two of us, and, and we decided just to have a, 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 a one-floor, three-bedroom apartment. I decided to play architecture again. I designed the thing. I was so excited. We we're going to downsize, down cost, and everything. And that thing took a year to be built, one year. And it really, it really distracted me. There were days that before I, pr- I preached, I had to pray, Lord, get that house out of my system. Possessions possess us. You remember we started with a TV like this, and then we wanted one like this, and then we wanted one like this, then we want a flat screen TV. Now we want the entire wall of the house to, have, to be a TV. And now that thing, man, oh man, it's like a magnet. We are just stuck to it. Possessions possess us. And we had a house, and then a house, and 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 a house. And, you know, the most popular channel is HGTV. They just tell you how to get the latest thing that you got to get. And so here's the deal. You have to have. And there's a moment in our lives that we have to have so much more stuff that stuff possesses us. Now, don't get me wrong. We all need stuff. You remember the world without cell phones? I don't know how people did it last, that, that time. I don't know. I think they were probably lost half of the time. I love maps. But kids now say, what is that? Are you an explorer? Are you Dora the Explorer or whatever? <laughs> we are dependent on stuff. Don't get me wrong. God gives you stuff because we need stuff. We need a shelter, don't we? So if you have shelter, say thank you. Just say it with me, thank you for shelter. Yeah. Yeah, I've been working with refugees in the Middle East. That's rough. They've got no shelter. Thank God for shelter. You have clothes? Tell God, thanks for, clo- thank, thanks for clothes. You have wheels? Thank God for wheels. Or my car. Some of you even give the car a name. My daughter called her Suzuki Susie. See, the thing is that possessions are a blessing. Don't let them possess you. Here's the second blessing. It's it's also a blessing. Work is a blessing. We live in an economy where it's hard to get a job. About 40% of millennials have a degree and they don't have a job for the degree that they studied for. Having a job is is difficult. If you have a job, you've got to be thankful. Having work is a blessing. Amen? Amen? Yeah, having a job is a blessing. We, we live in an, in, in, in an economy, this, this state, the economy of this state is not too good. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. We were driving, and I just told my wife, things haven't changed in 25 years. It's southern Illinois. We were driving by, last time from Paducah to Cairo, or Cairo we call it, but Cairo, and we found a the city is no more. Finding job is difficult. So we understand, we do understand unemployment. When we get employment, we get the opportunity to bring food to the table. Amen? But for some of us, once we get a job, the job takes precedent over the blessing. In fact, this man said, this, he was talking about the second blessing. He said, I just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to work them out. Please excuse me. In other words, he said, I just got a job. I just got a job. I got to I gotta go work. See, work is more important than my relationship with God. Don't get me wrong. Having a job is a blessing. But a lot of us... You know what, Pastor, what I have encountered is that 
we come here and we pray and we pray for, for Bobby and Father, give Bobby a job. And Bobby comes and, and then one day Bobby gets a job. And then we don't see Bob and Bobby anymore. What happened to Bobby? Oh, he got a job. Really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he works now Wednesdays and Saturdays. And, and he's so tired that Sundays he doesn't want to come. And so Bobby is so thankful to God who gave him a job that he forgot about God who gave him a job. And so he's trying his oxen. Don't get me wrong. God gave Bobby a job. It just happened that Bobby forgot about God. I saw that story. This is not just a, a metaphor. I, I saw that story literally in Brazil. I was preaching there, and the pastor introduced me to Roxana. He said, let me, let, me, let me introduce you to Roxana. She was unemployed for three years, so she was a volunteer in the church. She was there all the time because she didn't have a job, so she was volunteering in the church. One day, she's, finally, she got a job. And the first thing that Roxana did was that she endorsed her paycheck and put it in the offering plate. And the pastor said, what are you doing? You have been unemployed for three years. You, you have been barely making. You have been living out of charity. And the first thing you give us is to give the check. And she said, pastor, that's what you taught us, that we must bring the first fruit to the Lord. And that's the first fruit. Wow. She said, I've been unemployed for three years. What difference does uh, two weeks make? Ah. So I was preaching about Roxana. So five years later, I got to the church again in Rio, in the slums of Rio, and I said, hey, pastor, how is Roxana doing? And he said, oh, she got a job. I know, I know. How is she doing? Yeah, she got a job. Yeah, and the job consumed her. We haven't seen her in about six months. Work is a blessing. But it can take us away from the blessing. So possessions are a blessing. Work is a blessing. Here's the third one. The third one is family. What? Yeah, family. Verse 20. Still another said, I just got married. So I can come. Goodbye. He didn't even explain anything. He just said, got married, got to go, goodbye. Family. Now, in society, the most fundamental blessing that society can experience is family. Family is the fundamental unity of society. If you have a family, praise God. If you have a healthy family, praise, praise, praise God. If you have children, praise God. If you have gra grandchildren, praise God. Family is awesome. And yet, here the Lord is saying, even family, even family could take us away from the blessing. Because of my ministry, we spend a lot of Sundays, Sunday mornings in hotels. In fact, today is not an exception. And with no exception, with no exception, every Sunday morning, what we find a lot of is parents with their children attending their new church. Their new church is softball, volleyball, uh, whatever ball you have. And that's their church. There is mom and dad. They are guilty because, see, it's, it's a chain. It's a chain reaction. They are guilty because they, they have to get more possessions. Remember, they, now they have, they, it's, it's a family of four, but they need a seven-room house with nine bathrooms. Okay? And so they have to have it, and every child has to have a 60-inch a screen TV. So possessions are a mess. So because of that, they have to work. So they get the blessing of, of work. So he has to work, she has to work, and both of them has, have to get another job. So they are too busy. 
They're too busy and now they, are, they feel guilty that they're not with the kids anymore. So because they feel so guilty now, every time they have, they have to, to cover for the possessions and the work, every time they have, they use it and they go to, to Yellowstone or whatever, every time they can. And they miss giving them the blessing. Family is a blessing. We can't wait to see our daughters. We're going to have a family reunion this Friday. We don't see them. The four of us together is, is, like, is like Christmas for us. One lives in Boston. The other lives in, in Kansas. And, so, and we live in a hotel. <laughs> and so whenever we can get together, wow. We just, wow. We understand the value of family. It's a blessing, but even that blessing can keep us away from the blessing. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to thank God for the blessings that he has given us. We're going to thank God for possessions because we have stuff. We have shelter and clothing and wheels and we're going to praise god for work if if you have a job you need to bring them to god today almost like an offering this is my offering thank you if you don't have one come and and we're going to bless we're going to bless the job that by faith he's going to give you he he will give you a job unless you don't want it that's a different story but if you want one he will give you one and we're going to bless your family. I want to invite the, the worship team to come and, and help us. Are you there? Are you here? And this is what we're going to do there where you are. I want for you to meditate for a moment. Think of these things. If you are thankful for the possessions that God has given you, has allowed you to possess... And you want to dedicate them to God. I want you to stand where you are and say, I, I really want to thank God for this stuff that I have. And I don't want to be possessed by this stuff. If you have a job, if you have a job, I want to bless that blessing today. But I'm also going to pray that you're going to dedicate that blessing to God so that that blessing will not get in the way of the banquet. Or if you want to dedicate your family to God, I would like to, to pray a prayer of benediction, a blessing over your family, over your spouse, over your children, over your household. There where you are, you, would you stand and, and then I will, I will just bless you. If you, have, if you have stuff that you would like to, to ask the Lord, Lord, would you bless my stuff? <laughs> We're going to make this, uh, th there's this picture, this metaphor of, of an altar where we burn stuff. In the old times, in the old times, people will come and they will bring a, an offering. They will bring an offering of, of uh, goats and sheep or whatever. And, and the most perfect one was a, a lamb. Then God asked us to bring ourselves as an offering. But now if you, if you would like to bring the offering, He's not going to take away your possessions. He's going to bless you with more possessions. But He wants to bless that offering today. I want to ask the worship team to lead us. And if you want to bring those here to the, to the front, I'm going to ask the pastor to come and, and help me bless the blessing. We're going to bless it together. We're going we're gonna to bless the blessings that have the potential of keeping you from the blessing. And excuses no more. <laughs>